All right, guys, so I'm going to do the episode two of uh, how that crazy marker abuse came to be. And so um, before you get into stuff, uh, you know, like directly about my actual journey, it's good to dive into a little bit of the history that came before my dad and before my mom. And unfortunately, like in every Disney or Hollywood film in general, there's always a bit of a tragedy that starts everything. And then it sort of gets a little bit smoother and then there will be ups and downs and things like that. But in general, there's always a little bit of a tragedy to begin with. And to talk about this little tragedy, um, I want to speak about my grandfather from my dad's side. So on one end, this guy was one of the most incredible athletes, you know, um, super fit. He could run. Um, he was a boxer. He did all kinds of incredible things, including uh, he was an incredible painter. Um, and also when he stopped boxing because of certain things that happened to him, he then went on to teaching. So overall, you're thinking, well, wait a second, wait a second. This guy must have been a pretty cool guy, a uh, pretty cool guy and everything. Uh, what's what's all the intrigue? What's all the, um, you know, why is he a villain? Why is he a villain? Well, because... Although on one side he was an amazing person, uh, you know, very successful in what he was able to do physically as an athlete and all that, um, but unfortunately he went um, and uh, and um, when he came back from war, and this happens to a lot of uh, war heroes and things, when you come back from war, it, it scars you and it changes you, and so his personality, which probably was towards the you know arrogant side because you know when you're a boxer that's part of the training right the coach will get you into that mood where you're like okay you're a champion you're the best you're the best and you kind of need that kind of thing going in your brain to be able to be the best and to be able to, to be a champion and plus once you start winning and winning and winning then you start really believing it that you're the best you're the best and um and you've seen this also with mike tyson and other boxers who you know made it big uh, of course he didn't make it as big as Mike Tyson it was a different time it was in Sicily so um, different things but still but still you know when you come down from all this um, kind of thing you know the, the arrogance kind of stays with you and then um, he had a horrible horrible relationship with um, his family so he was abusive in, uh, in many ways with his wife and his children and this kind of stayed with him and stayed with his family uh, which is why um, every time that I spoke to my dad about his dad it was hard for him to um, to know to talk about him and so on and so forth sometimes he'd tell me these wonderful stories about the way that he remembered him but then um, he couldn't touch on certain subject because you're just too hurtful and, and, and too personal so um so there we have it there we have it we we had him and um he had three um three um three children so three children he had my dad and then he had two uh, daughters and um of course you know marriage marriage right that's one of the the big issues because you know marriage and then paying the bills and all that stuff and just life in general puts pressure on people who may be suffering from PTSD um, due to war circumstances and then other th things that happened to him in his life for instance because he was uh, uh, a champion boxer so on and so forth again as I said his arrogance may have brought, brought him to the point where you know um, he thought he was invincible and uh, one time when he was sparring with his um, sparring buddy he thought he probably pushed it to the next level and then um by accident his sparring button buddy hit him and uh, he went down and uh he suffered the consequences of that and possibly that may have impacted the way that in future he thought about um how he wanted to bring up his children because perhaps he wanted to stop them from um from getting in trouble now this gets me a little bit emotional but you know um you know when you talk about things like this in your life that's kind of gonna happen, right? It's gonna happen. So um, this man, this man that um, 
could have been a good man, turned out to be a bit of a villain. And um, his villainy just went on and um, was sort of permeated and became part, integral part of the uh, family that went on. So it, it left some pretty significant scars um, in the, the three children that he had. And of course, also uh, in the poor my grandmother who um you know later on passed on but anyway he ended up um the villain and uh, i do believe that he probably ended up dying alone in a home uh, somewhere so that's a, a tragedy in of itself but before then before then um it's good to it's good to say that um he made peace he made peace with my dad and um he apologized yeah he apologized for calling him, um, you know, for calling him certain things and uh, treating him the way that he did. So, so that's good. That's good. That's good um, that that happened. So, anyway, anyway, so that's the back, the back story that the back story to um, that. And then on the other side, on the other side, you have um, my grandmother and she was, you know, this very, very sweet soul. Um, I have these amazing, amazing uh, memories of going over there in Sicily and hanging out at her house. Uh, sometimes she'd have these parties, um, so she would cook for everybody. I remember hanging out with her in um, in her kitchen when she was cooking stuff. She was very, very good at it, um, and she made it fun. Um, I can't really recall because, you know, guys, my memory is what it is what we talked about but she just kept me happy and um, sometimes we'd watch tv together um, sometimes she would be knitting she made these amazing i think she was an artist as well because she could knit these pillows with like uh, i remember like dogs on them and stuff it was it was uh very very well crafted stuff so but anyway anyway so you see that uh, we had this um pre-family pre-family that uh brought a lot of um a lot of tumultuousness to um to our lives later on because that will obviously affect how my father perceived um his own reality and all that so anyway this was a little episode um and of course uh you know people can can jump in from the family if they decide to if i made some mistakes um but i think i think i kind of captured some of the what was going on back then and um hopefully this is not too hurtful if if it turns out to be too hurtful i will take it down from from youtube if it turns out to be uh, wrong what i said but that's kind of what i was able to remember recall based on what my father uh, would talk about uh when he talked about his father like he he said that he was an incredible dancer you know that he, he tried to he tried to bring out all the happy moments rather than the the tumultuous past so um yeah anyway there we have it that was uh, part two unfortunately it's not as fun perhaps as part one but they, it will get better it will get better as again you know how this goes you know in pixar movies and so on and so forth there's always a start then there's things going on then there's a happy then you know there's ups and downs it's life it's life so I'm going to I'm trying to portray it as realistically as possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next one.